Okay, Josh, so we're going to start a new file here. I'm going to open up this particular project and let's move it over to the home part of the screen, which is 00. zero. And actually, I probably would like to have this material be at 00, zero so probably the easiest way for me to do that is just to take this part, bring up the precision input center, move the middle of that to zero, zero. Then do a rotation of 90 degrees. This part, we're going to make a copy of this and center it right from the center there. Now we just put a little crosshair at the home position. So now I can select all this, go to move, and I'm going to choose snap to intersection and endpoint here. Just move that right down there. I don't want to create a copy, but I'll just get rid of that. So there's our uh, there's our part right at zero zero. And I'm going to go ahead and select this and say fit plate to selection, and that just gets it right on the uh, corner here. So now you know after looking at this, I, I don't really see a, t a real easy way. I mean, I, I know, and I'll, I'll mention this to you separately, but. You know, I think that probably there are programs with tools that would be better suited for this than what Enroute's going to have. Um, that being said, if I was going to try and do something like this, I'd want to use uh, sweep two rails most likely to and, and, and represent my change in elevation that way. If I try to take one of these and, and extrude it along a path, it's always going to remain perpendicular to this line. So it, it creates points where you have valleys. It just it's not it's not suited for this. The, the uniformity of the lines you would need to have to maintain this kind of a of a continuous angle are not going to occur with these kind of lines. So, you know, that's where I'm thinking there might be a blender or a, a SketchUp, a Rhino, a, an actual 3D NURBS modeling program would, would give you a few better tools for creating this kind of a contour. Of course, they don't have tool pathing, so in route would be where you would import that as an STL and then... Um, just using route to create a relief and toolpath and output it but i do think you're going to find some some tools that are going to give you a better overall looking part here for for this and and uh, what to keep in mind here is and route is considered an, an artistic 3d application so we don't particularly have tools for anything anyone could ever want to do in 3d but we have a lot of really good tools for artistic applications this is kind of getting uh, more towards uh, topographical engineering type application and, and some of our tools there are a little bit challenging to uh, to get just the right look here. And, uh, and I think if you wanted to spend enough time, you could probably think of something, but I'm, there's a limit to, to my uh, ability to try and play with this. And I think what I've come up with is probably the best I, I would be able to do with it. But there might, you know, if you wanted to take a painstaking amount of time uh, to, to come up with other options. I'm sure there are ways that that could happen, but with this kind of a setup, there's one specific thing I do here. So um, the way I'd, I'd look to do this is with the uh, sweep two rails. And first thing I'm gonna do is kind of come and change these rails a little bit. So I'm um, just going to actually come here and get rid of, get rid of this, take this point, And you really kind of want the rails to to have somewhat, somewhat of a similar flow to each other because if you uh, if you don't, then you get a funny looking line there as a result. So uh, I'm just going to kind of introduce some similar type waves that you see in this contour above. It's going to produce a good result flowing across there. All right, and I'll probably just extend this out past the edge a little bit as well. Now this one, you know, I mean, this is so close here. I don't know if we can get away with just coming over here and pulling this out just a little bit and not being too far off there. Then that'll probably give us one section here. I'm just moving that off the edge a little bit. So we got now one section. Now one thing I'll need to do here is come here probably and Let's make a copy of this one that's going to represent my lowest point and gradually creep up to there so there's first one second one third one now up here on the flat part we're going to probably go from here to here again up, up a little bit higher 
Although this says 1050 and this is flat and this is 1060. So 1050 seems to be about the highest part here. But uh, looks like there's maybe still a, a 10 foot. Yeah, it looks like from here to here it does go 10 foot, but this is going to be flat at, at 105. So, so let's come here and make sure all of our rails are continuous across the part. I'm just going to merge all those together. You know what, I'm going to take these three things here, control X. I'm not sure what they are exactly. Let's paste those there in case we need those later. All right, so here's my part, and that's going to be coming across here. All right, so I'm going to end up breaking this up eventually. And I don't know if we need this as a flat or a, or a closed shape. Um, I think if I recall, we just have a little bit of work to do here. So probably the easiest way to do that is just to knock that off right here. Knock that off right there. Get rid of those. And then, uh, let's extend. We want join contours. Kind of get rid of that there. And we'll go here just to smooth that out a little bit and use the smooth curve approximation tool. All right. So uh, there we have our, our blue shape. So that's a closed shape. This part now, I eh, probably just want to come here and make sure this is extending. A little bit past that point. All right. So, um, you know, what I would do here now is kind of start this at zero. Let's say we're going to do two inches. We're going to divide it by one, two, three, four different heights. And then this will be uh, its own height. Uh, so uh, you said we're using two almost one inch sheets. So we're going to say... Uh, one point let's see here one point eight divided by four equals about point four five in each so this one I'll come here now hit F2 and we're going to put this at point four five I'll raise it up a little bit and we're going to select this one, I'm going to say 0.9, move that one up. Okay, so uh, this one was uh, uh, 0 0.9, so that's 0, 0 0.45, 0 0.9, all right, um, I don't want to mess, mess this up, so I'm going to say 0.9 plus 0.45 is 1.35. That's what I thought. All right, so this one we're going to say 1.35. And then 0.45 would be 1.8 for this last one. All right, so that's 1.35. Uh, actually, this is 1. Point, uh, let's see, 1.44. Yeah, 1.8. And then this will go ahead and put it 1. Point, looks like it might be just a little bit lower there. Uh, so we'll say 1.6. Just for the heck of it. Okay. So now we've got uh, different heights of things we're going to use for our rails, and the, the angle or the slope is going to come from the difference of height in the rails. So we're just going to use a flat line as our profile. This is a fairly big object, uh, so just in the interest of making this go a little bit faster, I'm going to go ahead and reduce this maybe down to 40, which I rarely go below 50, but here we go. Now what I'm going to do is come here and say uh, I want to do a sweep two rails. So let's select the first rail, which is here. Select the second rail, which is here. I'm just kind of starting off in the middle. And the cross sections one, two. I want to see that happen at the ends. Merge highest and hit my green check mark.
So uh, you can see here, here's my, here's my first section of this part I created. All right, things uh, kind of tied up for a minute. But I think we're back, but I'm going to turn off this, this light bulb here. Just so that uh, we won't uh, have to spend too much time redrawing stuff. All right. Now let's go back to my top view. All right, so let's try it again here. Take a look at there. We got that middle part there. If I hit F12. And uh, let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. It seems like that's where I'm having some trouble is, is when I get it in the perspective view, zooming in and out. All right. So we're going to come back here now. We've got this one part going through the middle here now. Let's go ahead and do the lower one. So we're going to go to sweep two rails. Here's the first rail. Here's the second rail. Here's the sweep sections now. Yeah, that seems like it'll be good enough. Sometimes I might have to adjust where the, if I don't want that green line intersecting the, the part in any way. And it's important that merge highest be selected here. So the new things will just blend in with what's there before. So then you get kind of a, a contour that's appearing here. Now we're going to go to um, select this is our first rail. This is our second rail. Sweep sections one, two, merge highest. So uh, now uh, if we look here, I'm just going to try and see it in perspective view. It'll probably open up better on yours than mine because this is a a new kind of a thing here and I think there's a little adjustment period uh, we're trying to figure out the best way to work with this um, display okay so there we can kind of see how it's flowing down here now uh, let's do the other one here and we're going to select this outer profile Sweep two rails. There's my first rail. Here's the second rail. Now this one's kind of going, um, going way out there. So I think I'm going to come here and go to point edit mode. Click on one of these points and hit cut contour. So for this one, I don't really want it to go all the way down. So I'm changing the rail here. Let's go back here again. Sweep two rails. First rail. Second rail, sweep seconds, one, two. Now these are crossing each other. So what that tells me is one of these rails is not going in the same direction as the other. So I'm gonna to go to reverse open contour. All right, get rid of those three lines there. Uh, sweep two rails, there's my first rail. Second rail, sweep sections, one, two. Our highest. So now you see everything now, just because of the nature of some of these rails, and that's something you have to play around with a little bit. There are some, there are things you could do that would probably make that a smoother transition. Now I'm going to take this part and let's just uh, snap to endpoint here. Turn it off for a second. Turn it on again. Select everything right here and say merge selection. All right, now we can select this point. And I think that was 1.8. So we can just say here, we're gonna add a flat, no thickness relief. 
height 1.8 merge highest and that should just blend in right with that spot now we're going to take this one we're going to say replace and we'll do this 1.6 so just in this area here, we'll get that little spot where there would actually be a flat spot with a hill retaining wall type thing behind it. So this is the best way I'm going to get this surface, which is kind of starting up here. And uh, let's review this over here now. We can see that it's, starting, it's going to start low and continue to raise here as it goes up the side. Now look at that. All of a sudden it's working. All right, and you can see the flat spots right here and right here. So, you know, you might even have to go with the blending tool here if you really wanted to get rid of some of these. And you can just go to point edit mode now and go to uh, blend. Looks a little bit small for the radius. So let's give a little one inch radius here. Turn off our snaps. Turn the power on. You can kind of just go through here and blend out blend some of these into smooth transitions and uh, would probably help uh, help the overall look of the part just kind of tracing along the lines here all right so now we've kind of blended those in a little bit if I go to f12 I mean you really can't see too much here happening even though it's an inch and a half but you can see it's kind of going from upper to lower so that would be about my best uh, attempt at doing this. Sweep two rails and give yourself the rails at the elevations you want them and then give yourself good rails you can sweep between. Now we still have one little thing to do here. Okay, and I'm going, this one's already outside a little bit. So now I'm going to uh, and only turn the snaps on when I need them. And turn them off real quick if I don't want them. Somewhere around there. Seems like a good point. Now I can connect these two together. And if I go here and just bump up my merge tolerance a little bit, I'm going to make sure I, I get that all the way there. And I'm going to select this relief now and select this part. One more time, we'll do a merge highest with uh, 1.8 I think that one was so you can kind of see how that's and uh, I don't know maybe that should have been seems to kind of be a little bit closer there so so again I can come in here and go to my cleanup tool I'm gonna soften that up a little bit so the cleanup tool if you get some funny edges can be used to uh, to clean that kind of, of thing up a little bit and make it much less less of a noticeable part so this would be my uh, best attempt to get to this, this shape. Other than that, you know, um, you could get pretty specific probably with some other programs, some of which are even free, but this is this would be the best way to route to try and achieve this, this kind of overall look for a project.